It was a Sunday afternoon like this, and church was over, and the family had just had lunch, and they were heading home, and they drove by a cemetery. And the little boy was very interesting. You noticed all the dirt rolled up around the edge of this newly opened grave, and he looked to his dad, and he said, one of them got out. <laughs> the father says to this day when he drives by a cemetery, he thinks about what his little boy said and how profound it really might be. A while ago, I was traveling and had to change planes in Detroit. And I sort of pressed my nose against the glass and looked out, and I was trying to think who I knew in Detroit, and then a, a grim thought came to mind. My mind wandered to the Waterford Township on a place called Paulson Street. It's a guy that used to hang out there. As a matter of fact, his white van was known to, to frequent that, that neighborhood. Every time he went into the brown house and came out, it meant somebody had died. The people in the neighborhood thought it was a little bit creepy. You may have recognized his face. His name is Dr. John Kevorkian. Kevorkian's assisted many people in numerous suicides over the years. Kevorkian has a nickname. His nickname is Dr. Death. Now, I'd like to go to the opposite end of the spectrum this morning with you and look at somebody else whom we might call Dr. Life, and of course we're talking about Jesus. Our scripture this morning comes from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel in verse 10. It's the words of Jesus where he said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. To me, that's the best Easter message we could ever find. I have come that you might have life. That, that title and that mission really is, is, is a description of what we're about here at North Lake Presbyterian Church. To worship God with joy and enthusiasm and to encourage who? Others. Thank you. We're getting better and better at that. <laughs> to encourage others to draw closer to Him. It happens through the food pantry. It happens through Operation Homebound. It happens through Little Blessings Christian Child Care. It happens through on and on through many of the things that we do. It's woven in and around. It's all about helping people to find life. Not just life when they die, but a meaningful, fulfilling life now. About a, it's about a year and a half ago, my wife Sandy and I were we're shopping at Walmart because our grandson, Eli, needed a pair of shoes. He was about three years old then and very active. He, he still is very active, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> and I had him by the hand, and we were walking down the shoe department. All of a sudden, he pulled loose, and he made his way around the edge of the fixture in the shoe department. And I stepped around the edge of the fixture, and he was gone. You ever have that happen to you? And I... Not too long before that, I'd seen those, one of those uh, documentaries about child abduction, and my heart was beating faster and faster. Went to customer service, had them put out that APB on all children who are unaccompanied. Seconds seemed like an eternity. At that moment, I'll be honest with you, at that moment, nothing else mattered. I had letters to answer, reports to write, deadlines to meet, planning to be done, sermons to write, the list went on and on, but only one thing really mattered to me, and I prayed this prayer probably a thousand times in the five minutes that that experience was going on. Oh God, help us to find him. After Eli was found in the produce department, <laughs> all the way to the other end of the store, and to this day I can see the produce manager with a child in tow walking across like this. From since that moment, I've thought to myself, if I felt the same urgency toward other people who are without God in their lives. One of the great opportunities of Easter is to offer the gift of life that only God can offer. To offer it to people on his behalf. Someone always asked me, just before Easter, are you going to say anything new this year at at Easter, how do you find something new to say? It reminds me, Desmond Tutu, the bishop, attended uh, Duke University once to speak in the chapel. 
2,000 people waited for six hours outside in order to get a seat. Dr. William Williman was the chaplain at that particular time. Someone made the comment to him, I hope he's going to say something new, but every time I've ever heard him, he just says the same old thing. When they, he arrived to speak, Dr. Tutu did not disappoint them. He said basically the same thing. He didn't really mention apartheid. He chose a text from the Bible and preached a sermon from that. The news media went away disappointed because they were hoping to get something new, a, a, a new angle on things. When the whole thing was over, Dr. Willeman wrote his reflection. He said, the power of our faith is embodiment. We don't greet a problem like apartheid with new ideas. We greet it with new people. And isn't that the way John starts out his gospel? And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we beheld his glory. You see, Jesus came not just to talk about faith. He came to demonstrate it so that we could see it, believe it, experience it for ourselves because you see the resurrection of Jesus Christ did not change the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ changed the lives of people who changed the world